Hi students! Today, I will guide you in our week 3 lesson, Conventions and Citing Sources. I am Ms. Jerusel Tayab, advisor of Grade 8 Marie Curie, your English teacher for the week. To get started, please make sure that you have the following materials ready. Your self-learning modules, bad paper, and your pen. At the end of this presentation, you are expected to define citation, explain the importance of citing sources, and create style citations for various sources with the correct format according to the APA style citation. Let's start with this short activity. Directions Rearrange the given letters to form a term. You have three minutes and the timer starts now. Let us check if you answer it correctly. Here are the answers. For number one, plagiarism. Number two, bibliography. Three, citation. Four, research. Five, references. Great! I hope you were able to get the right answers. Have you written a research paper? 
In writing a research paper, including any other academic papers, it is important that you mention or cite the sources of your information. This allows you to give credit to the original owner of information or messages you gathered for particular persons, organizations, and the like. Basically, there are a number of ways in citing the sources of information. One of the well-known styles is known as the APA 7th edition format proposed by the American Psychological Association or APA. In this lesson, you are expected to identify the different conventions in writing references using the APA 7th edition format and use this style in citing sources in your academic papers. Usually, citing sources is found at the latter part of a book or article. APA 7th edition format Introduced by the American Psychological Association, the APA is considered as one of the largely used referencing style in terms of research and other academic endeavors. The APA 7th edition format features a number of ways in citing authors and their work. A few will be highlighted in this lesson to guide you in basic referencing styles. Let's take a look at this image and tell me what can you observe. Right! The image shows someone stealing ideas from another person. But can ideas really be stolen? Let's find out as we explore our lesson. When we are doing assignments or research where do we get information right we get information from sources like books newspaper and magazine articles or the internet when we get ideas from others we need to cite its sources but what does it mean to cite a source if you borrow ideas from a source you must give the source the credit or it is considered plagiarism. But what is plagiarism? Plagiarism is the act of presenting the words, ideas, or images of another as your own. It denies authors or creators of content the credit they are due. Whether deliberate or unintentional, plagiarism violates ethical standards. How do we avoid accusation of plagiarism? We have to acknowledge the original authors and their contributions to the ideas presented by using citation. So what is citation? A citation is a reference to the source of information used in one's written work. In academic writing, Citing sources is an important skill one must learn. This does not only prove one's honesty, but also gives a glimpse on how a piece of written work was constructed. Moreover, citing sources helps a writer to avoid plagiarism and maintain academic credibility, to Give credit to the authors of the sources that you used and acknowledge their work. 3. Provide credibility to your work. And 4. Help future researchers easily locate sources. Here are the basic principles of reference list entries. Generally, a reference list entry has four elements. First, the author. Who is responsible for this work? Date. When was this published? Title. What is the work called? And lastly, the source. Where can I retrieve this work? The APA referencing format for books follow this format. First, the author's name. Invert the name of authors. Last name comes first, followed by a comma, 
than the initials. There should be a period after initials, and the initials are separated by a space. Next, publication date. Place inside parenthesis the year of publication. Do not forget the period. Next, the title of the book. The title of the book is written in italics. Capitalize only the first letter of the title. Capitalize proper nouns and end with a period. Now, if the book has a volume or edition number, include it in parenthesis after the title of the book. Edition is written as ed. Dot. Next, place of publication. Indicate the number of the publisher followed by a period. Here are some of the examples. If there are two or more authors, follow the order of names as presented in the book. The last author is usually separated by an ampersand. Here is an example. If there are 3 to 20 authors, include all the names until the 20th author. Here is an example. If there are more than 20 authors, write the names of the first 19 authors, followed by an ellipsis, and then the last author. Here's an example. Great! Let's see if you understood our discussion. It's time to use your pad, paper, and pen. You can find this activity in your learning module on page 12. Learning Task 1 Study the bibliographical entries below. Put a check if the entry is written correctly and an X if it is not. Write your answers in a pad paper. You have 3 minutes to answer the first 3 items. Timer starts now.
have 3 minutes for items 4 and 5. Check your answers. For number one, the answer is check. For number two, the answer is cross. For number three, answer is check. Number four, answer is cross. And lastly, for number five, check. All right. I hope you were able to get most of the answers correctly. Otherwise, great job. Way to go, virtual learners. Thank you for today. And I'll see you all again tomorrow for more discussion and activities.